than others do. I mean, everything has to really feel good to them. And so you have to know yourself, and you have to pray in this area, and you have to get all the information you can from the Word of God and other good Christian books, and you have to make your mind up that Satan can play with your feelings, and the feelings are fickle, they're ever-changing, and you cannot, you must not depend on your feelings to dictate truth to you. Come on now. Psalm 94, 12 and 13. We have seasons of testing in our lives. Thank God that he says he'll never allow more to come on us than what we can bear. But with every temptation, he also provides a way out. You can always trust God when you've come to the end of what you can take. You'll get a breather. <laughs> something good will happen. Something wonderful will happen. The trial will go away. But then there will be other times of testing in our life. Why, God, why? <laughs> Psalm 94, 12, and 13 explains it wonderfully. Blessed, happy, fortunate, and to be envied is the man whom you discipline, and discipline never feels good, and instruct, O Lord. Blessed is the man whom you teach out of your law. Why does God do that? Verse 13 says, that you may give him power to keep himself calm in the days of adversity until the inevitable pit of corruption is dug for the wicked. It's not going to do any good for us to pray for God to keep us calm. He gives us the spirit of self-control that we might keep ourselves calm. Let me read it again. That, that you may give him power to keep himself calm. God gives us the power, but we have to make the decision. You know, when you feel yourself getting upset, you can talk to yourself and say, okay, I say sometimes, okay, Joyce, calm down. Breathe. Sometimes I will, I'll get tense about something and I can feel the tenseness in me and I will purposely say, okay, relax inside. And you can not only relax outside, you can also relax inside because many times, although no one can see it on the outside, we're, we're in a not inside about something that we don't like or something we're resisting. A lot of our pressure and stress and tension is from things in our life that we don't want, but really we can't do anything about them, and it doesn't do any good to get all tense. We might as well relax and believe God because he's the only one that can make it go away. Amen? And in our society, we are so much in a hurry all the time that I don't think we spend very much time relaxing and then it shows up in disease. And tomorrow morning, I'm going to teach about how negative feelings buried alive never die. They just stay inside and eat away at you and eventually show up as disease. Amen? <laughs> We're going to talk about the mind-body-emotions connection. 75 to 90 percent of all people who go to their primary care physician, their problem is stress-related. It doesn't mean that the symptoms aren't real. It doesn't even mean the disease is not real. But it does mean if you don't deal with the fruit, even if you medicate that fruit, if you never deal with the root, you'll get new fruit. We have to learn how to keep ourselves calm during trouble. Anybody can stay calm and sweet and peaceful when they're getting everything their own way. But maturity is when you're not getting anything your way and sometimes for a long period of time. How long do we last in situations like that? And sometimes we get a series of trouble, a cycle of temptation is what Luke chapter 4 says Satan brought against Jesus. When the cycle of temptation had ended, Satan went away to wait for a more opportune time. We better develop stability in our lives because if we don't ever develop stability, Satan's going to be in charge and it, our lives are just going to be an up and down, up and down, up and down mess. Tonight we'll talk about mood swings and emotional addictions. Uh-oh. <laughs> Go to 1 Corinthians 2. I love it when I'm able to teach a wonderful series like this and then get it on television for the millions of people to see who are having problems in their life. And I know there are a lot of people watching my television right now, and I just want to tell you something. God's got your answer. The world doesn't have your answer. God has your answer. Yeah. Amen. I believe with all my heart that every answer that we need for any problem in life is found somewhere in this book. God loves you. He wants to help you. You've not made so many mistakes that 
God won't give you another chance. I encourage you to reach out to the Lord today and ask him to get involved in your life, in your situation, in your problems, and let him begin to do a work in you. God is faithful, and if you'll seek him, you'll find him. Amen. First Corinthians chapter 2 talks about three different kinds of people. We're going to begin in verse 13, and it says, We are setting these truths forth in words, not taught by human wisdom, but taught by the Holy Spirit. Combining and interpreting spiritual truths with spiritual language. So Paul said, I'm trying to talk to you in the spirit. But the natural non-spiritual man does not accept or welcome or admit into his heart the gifts and teachings and revelations of God. The natural man cannot understand spiritual things. You go tell some natural person that doesn't know God that you give 10% of your money of your money away and they'll think you're crazy. You tell a normal person that you took vacation to go listen to a lady talk for 12 hours and they'll think you're stark raving mad. <laughs> Amen. For to him they are folly, meaningless nonsense. And he is incapable of knowing them. He cannot understand them. He cannot become acquainted with them because they are spiritually discerned. You see, we have to make our minds up. If we're going to live up here, out of our heads, or down here, where our spirit man is. We feel things from God in here. John 7 says, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. So we know that somewhere out of this area called the belly, that's where the spirit of God dwells, or the heart, the deepest parts of man. We dare not make decisions by our feelings, by what we think or what we want, because all that is, is the soulish realm. And we ended our teaching last night in Luke chapter 5, talking about how Jesus told the disciples, come on out into the deep and get ready for a haul. And people who are carnal and just living in the shallow realm of the soul are never going to experience promised land living. We have to go deeper. And we found that what the disciples did when Jesus came to them and told them, Although they'd been fishing all night and had caught nothing and they'd cleaned their, their nets up. And I can't even imagine how tired you are after an ordeal like that. Because they didn't have any of the modern conveniences that we have today. So it must have been quite a job. And I'm sure they were ready to go home and get in bed and get some rest. And Jesus shows up and says, you're not catching anything because you're not fishing deep enough. Get back in your boats. Go back out. Only this time go into deeper water and you will catch a haul of fish. And Peter told him what he thought, what he wanted, and what he felt. I'm exhausted. We didn't catch anything. But on the ground of your word, on the ground of your word, we will lower the nets again. I love that. I don't want to. I don't feel like it. I don't think it's a good idea. But I will. It's kind of the same attitude that David had when he said, this is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad. I can almost guarantee you the day that David wrote that, that he didn't feel like praising God. I bet he felt like slapping somebody or having a good fit. How much you want to bet? <laughs> but he said, that's not why God has given me this day. This is the day the Lord has made. And I will tell you what I will do. I will praise the Lord. I will rejoice and be glad. Thank God for a sanctified will turned in God's direction. They're spiritually discerned. Verse 15 says, because the spiritual man tries everything, he examines questions and looks into everything. It's talking about with his spirit. He doesn't just, you know, he says, well, I feel this, but I'm going to check and see if I got peace about it inside. I think this, but I'm going to wait a minute and see if I've got peace inside. Because Colossians 3.15 says we should let peace rule in our life as an umpire, making every final decision. When people learn to do things if they have peace about it and leave it alone if they don't have peace about it. And you never know for sure if you have peace unless you wait for those emotions to subside, especially if you're a real emotional person. I know people that get themselves in deep, deep trouble because they are so emotionally inclined and they mistake those feelings for God. Well, I know it's God. I know it's God. I know it's God. <laughs> and then three weeks later, it's not God anymore. And you know, God's not a mental case. He doesn't change his mind every week. <laughs> there are changes he makes in our lives, but you don't get a new ministry every 30 days. Well, in January, I feel called to work in the nursery. And in February, I feel called to usher. And in March, I feel called to do nothing. And 
You know, in April, I feel called to be a partner with Joyce Meyer Ministry, but by May, I've forgotten all about that. Amen. On Thursday night, I decided to go to every meeting in the conference, but by Friday morning, I'd changed my mind. Come on now. When are we ever going to get around to following peace and doing what we know we should do and not following our fickle feelings? Three types of people are talked about here in 1 Corinthians. The natural man, he's the man that's unregenerate and devoid of the spirit, has no appreciation for the gospel at all. He can't understand spiritual things, period, end of the conversation. The spiritual man who is regenerate possesses spiritual maturity as seen in freedom from living in the natural. The spiritual man knows how to get along with other people, is willing to do whatever he needs in order to do so. The spiritual man is not narrow-minded. He's willing to listen to reason. He's filled with truth, walks in integrity, keeps his commitment. His life is ruled by the law of love, and he displays the fruit of the Spirit at all times. Then we have the carnal man. And sad to say, that's where most people fall. Thanks for listening. Learn how to keep calm in every circumstance with today's offer, Managing Your Emotions. This teaching series is available now.